Next, I'm happy to introduce Andy Taylor, President and CEO of Gore Mutual, based in Toronto, Canada. Andy has demonstrated outstanding business acumen and leadership in his 15 years at Gore, including eight years as Chief Financial Officer. He's been responsible for the finance functions at Gore, including reporting, investments, reinsurance, financial strategy and planning, and risk management. So it suffices to say that he knows the business inside and out. It also proves that he was the ideal candidate to become their president and CEO in July of 2020. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Andy Taylor. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for that very warm welcome. And I recognize that uh, it is 8 o'clock AM in Las Vegas on day three of the conference. So not exactly prime time. But I am thanking all of you and really grateful for you for coming out this morning to hear our story. And over the next half an hour, I'm going to tell you our story. And it's one we call Legacy to Leader. And it's a story about how we are transforming a 180-year-old company into a high-performing industry leader in just a few short years. And so in order for you to appreciate the magnitude of the change that we're putting through our organization, I wanted to just take a step back and give you a bit of the history of our company. We are Canada's, one of Canada's oldest PNC mutual insurance companies. We were founded in 1839, and so this year we'll be 182 years old. And there's something unique about a company that can survive for over 180 years through several world wars, the Great Depression, uh, and here we are today completely rebuilding and reinventing ourselves in the middle of a global pandemic. And I think that what is unique about us is somewhere in our DNA is a passion for change and innovation. And what I would say, though, is that after 180 years of a proud history, we have always taken a very incremental approach to change, so slowly changing our organization over the many years that we have been in business. And as we entered into what we call our next horizon strategic planning process a number of years ago, we had to have a very candid and honest conversation about who we were as an organization relative to the industry that we were competing in and our competitors, where we were seeing large-scale insurers and exponential change in our industry. And what we actually said to ourselves was, we're actually not a high-performing business. At the end of 180 years, we'd had, a, a, as I said, a proud history. We were financially strong, but our business was not high performing. Our operating models were outdated. We had traditional workflows. We had been working on a legacy replacement program within our technology program for close to a decade, and we had not been successful. We had complex technology systems, and in fact, those systems were holding us back rather than elevating and accelerating the growth of our business. And at the end of 180 years, as you can see on the chart behind me, 
we remained a regional insurance company and subscale in an industry of consolidation and exponential change. To put that into perspective, it took us 20 years to grow the business from 100 million to 475 million, which on the surface doesn't sound like a bad story. And I think that's what's interesting about our, our journey. Uh, it isn't a bad story. You know, we, had, we were growing, we were profitable, and we could have continued on that path if we chose to. Uh, but if we looked at the pace of that change and what was happening around us in the industry, it would take us another 20 years to get to a billion dollars. And we already were at a point where we were not yet relevant to scale distribution and, and our competitors. And so that led us to the decision to take a pause and completely start to think differently about strategic transformation and how we would approach the next phase of our strategy. And we have had to leave behind this incremental improvement mindset that I talked about that we'd been on for 180 years and really embrace a concept that we call radical accelerated transformation. And the best way I can articulate this is if we had been renovating our house one room at a time for 20 years and making slow progress, uh, as a leadership team, we sat down and said, we need to literally bulldoze the house and build a new house in the next two to three years. And that is, that's what we talk, talk about when we're talking about radical transformation versus incremental thinking. And that was the beginning of what we call Next Horizon. And as I stand here today, we're two years into our Next Horizon strategy transformation, and we're seeing tremendous success. We have already launched an entirely new operating model in personal lines and a national contact center that is highly automated and scalable. We completely redesigned our claims operating model, bringing deep specialization and standardization into that business. And we're seeing over $20 million of recurring cost savings coming out of our claims business. Obviously, uh, excited to share with this crowd that we were the first company in Canada to go live full suite on the cloud with Guidewire in 18 months, which again is incredible. <laughs> Underwriting, billing, claims, the full platform in 18 months. And you heard me say it had taken us a decade to try to replace our technology before that, and we, we hadn't been successful. And then the final piece um, that is one that I'm really passionate about is the investment we've made in our talent. Throughout this two years that we have been transforming our company, we have added 200 people to our organization during the pandemic. And we're bringing in talent from across the industry, top talent, and these people are bringing thought leadership and really chart, supercharging our transformation. So how have the results been since we started? Here we are two years into the transformation, and again, we're seeing really incredible results. You heard me talk about 180 years to get to 475 million. In the three year period since we launched Next Horizon, we're forecasting to grow our business by $200 million. Just put that into perspective. I mean, that is radical transformation. And the momentum that we have created and built within our organization has given us the confidence now to set an ambitious target over the next five years to grow our business to a billion dollars. Again, reflecting on my earlier comments, had we continued on our path that we were on, nothing was wrong, we were profitable, we were growing, but we would have achieved this goal in 2040 at the pace that we were going on, right? So not, not accelerated change. Um, we're looking at five years to get to a billion dollars, and all of this is on our way to our ultimate vision to becoming a purpose-driven, digitally-led national insurance company over the next decade, at which, at which point we are forecasting to be four times the size we were when we started this journey. And at that point, we feel we will be a relevant competitor in, in a fast-changing market. So how did I find myself at 8 a.m. on the stage uh, in Las Vegas talking about transformation. How did we decide as a company that's 180 years old to completely reinvent ourselves, to rebuild our business over a two to three year period 
when you heard me say everything was fine. You know, we were growing, we were profitable. And that's where our next horizon strategy comes in. As a leadership team and as a board of directors, we had actually a very candid and open conversation. And we said, you know, if we continue on that path, the future actually isn't that bright for a mid-sized generalist insurance company without a high-performing business model. And the core principles behind Next Horizon, there's two fundamental principles that we have really embraced. And the first one is change when you don't need to change. So change from a position of strength before it's too late and you're not forced to change. And the second one is looking out on the horizon, and that's why we call it Next Horizon. And so the, the timeline for this strategy, instead of looking at the next two to three years, we looked out over the next decade. And we said, what will our industry and what will our world look like in 2030 when we get there? And what will we need to do to reinvent ourselves as a business to be a high-performing, relevant business in that environment? And I wouldn't be a proud Canadian if I didn't have some sort of hockey quote in my presentation. So one of our heroes in Canada is Wayne Gretzky, and he's famous for talking about skating to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. And I think that's a great way to articulate our mindset in, within Next Horizon at Gore Mutual. We could have decided to catch up and get to kind of where the industry is today, but we decided to actually leapfrog in front of the industry and go to where the industry is going over the next 10 years. And that applies to all areas of our business. And there were three key trends that we looked at within the Next Horizon uh, strategy process that really informed our thinking about reinventing our business. And these trends were both threats and opportunities for us. So I'll take you through each of these, and then later we'll see how we can tie these back to our strategy. The first trend was consolidation, massive and accelerated consolida consolidation. In Canada, we sell our products through independent brokers in the US. I think you refer to them as agents. And we had traditionally sold through small family-run businesses, maybe 25 million in scale. And these companies were being acquired at an accelerated pace by large-scale distribution, large regional and large national brokerages. And so we're seeing our distribution force disappear into a new distribution model that I would argue we were not yet relevant to because this, this distribution landscape, you know, two billion plus in size, we didn't have a high performing uh, mo business model, we were not a scale insurer and we were not national. The, the second part of consolidation was our competitors. So we were seeing large insurers in Canada merging and creating even larger scale insurers. So the top 10 competitors in Canada represent roughly 75% of our industry in terms of premium. And what's interesting about Gore Mutual, notwithstanding our scale as a mid-size insurer, that's who we compete with today and that's who we, we have to uh, be relevant to. That creates an opportunity and a threat for us. The opportunity is that the distribution partners that we work with want to have an alternative to the large-scale insurers and we are an attractive alternative to them. The threat is we remain subscale as they get larger and more sophisticated. And so the conclusion we took from this was we needed to completely reinvent ourselves, create a high-performing business model, and we needed to take scale seriously as an organization to become relevant to scale distribution. The second trend, exponential change in technology, is not new to anyone in this room. We were seeing inside and outside our industry exponential change in pace of technology. And as you heard me uh, comment earlier, our systems were complex and actually holding us back. They were, they were not near uh, to the point of creating modern digital or omni-channel experiences for our brokers and our customers. And so the strategic takeaway for us on that was we needed to, rather than try to improve our technology, completely write off everything we have and replace all of it over a three-year period. And when I say that, I'm not kidding. Every single piece of technology in our company is being replaced over two to three years. And the second uh, principle for us was, again, with Next Horizon, to go to the most modern cloud-based platform available and leapfrog in front of our competitors. 
The third and final trend that informed Next Horizon was customer expectations. You know, this again is not unique to insurance, but we were seeing outside of our industry consumers changing the way that they behave and have relationships with the products and services that they were purchasing. And they were looking for an experience and an association uh, that we as an industry and certainly as a company weren't providing. We were creating experiences, but I don't think they were positive. So that one led us to the thinking that uh, we'll talk about later around purpose. And so as a mutual insurance company, we're doing work on purpose to create a unique value proposition to our customers. And combining that with a high-performing business model gives us an opportunity to start to actually create an experience for our customers and our brokers. So those are the three key trends, threats, and opportunities that informed uh, our decision to, rather than continue to incrementally improve, completely rebuild our company over two to three years. And I think the one point I would make is, and, and I think, it, again, it's unique to our organization, this would not be possible unless you have 100% alignment right from the board of directors through our senior management team right down to the front lines. And we spent an enormous amount of time having employee sessions and educating our, our team on these threats so that we could bring everybody on this journey with us. And we needed to have 100% support to get there. And in late 2019, we officially launched Next Horizon. And Next Horizon is our strategy to respond to the threats that I talked about earlier. And there's three key pillars to Next Horizon. The first one is purpose-driven, the second one's digitally led, and national insure. And these are designed to address the issues that I talked about earlier. And I'll take you through each of these, and you'll see how they come back to some of the key themes that we've talked about throughout the conversation so far. So purpose-driven is unique for us, because we are, as I mentioned, Canada's oldest PNC mutual insurance company. Uh, as a mutual insurance company, we're unique because uh, we don't stand for just maximizing shareholder value. And that gives us a unique opportunity and a differentiated uh, value proposition in the market. And so we've been doing work on modernizing our purpose and what, why is the reason that we exist. And we've launched something we call our path to purpose. And underneath our path to purpose is our purpose statement to provide insurance that does good. And there's three pillars under that. Be good, do good, and spread good. And the concept of be good is how we treat our employees. Do good is how we treat our customers and our broker partners. And spread good is the impact that we have in our communities where we live and work. And we feel that if we modernize the value proposition of, of a purpose-driven organization, and we combine that with a high-performing business, we can really create something special and unique relative to many of our scale competitors that are public companies or foreign-owned subsidiaries and don't have a unique purpose. Having said that, we didn't want to become a not-for-profit or a charity organization. You heard me talk about we want to compete with the largest scale insurers in our industry, and that's where Digitally Led comes in. Digitally Led is the program to completely rebuild our company over two to three years. And there's two key components to that. The first one was redesigning all of our operating models. And we've worked with partners like McKinsey to bring world-class thinking into our business and redesign our operating models so that they're scalable and high-performing. The second piece is, is the replacement of all of our technology that I've referred to several times today, an aggressive and accelerated investment in technology over a two-year period. And combining this concept of purpose-driven and a high-performing business now gives us a platform to scale our business and really become and start to think about becoming a national insurer. We have created significant demand with the large-scale distribution businesses I referred to earlier, but we were not yet relevant to those business, businesses. And now as we come out the other side of Next Horizon, with a clear purpose, a high-performing business model, a scalable business model, we can now really take advantage of scaling and growing this business. Now, none of this would be possible without the significant investment and the passion of our employees. 
And again, here we took a completely different view. We had incrementally added to our resources for decades. And in this case, in Next Horizon, we decided we would significantly accelerate our investment in talent, adding 200 people, as I referred to, throughout the pandemic. And what's amazing about this is it was a unique opportunity also that presented itself. The pandemic, virtual work, the expansion of our business, our story about Next Horizon has created an amazing opportunity for us to attract the industry's best talent. And we're seeing incredible people come to our organization who have been through transformations before, who are helping us take us on this journey. And I couldn't uh, reinforce this enough. You can spend as much money as you want. You can put all the technology in place. But if you don't have the right talent and people that are passionate to bring us along this journey, uh, we would never be where we are today. So we thought it would be fun to share a video. These are our actual employees shortly following the release of Release 3, which was our cloud-based personal auto system uh, this last summer. So let's roll the video. All right, okay, let's roll it. I look straight, hey? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to think I was busy before R3 started, but once we hit go and uh, the lights uh, went on, it just got even crazier. Back in February, I started testing as a tester. I worked with a team of from Claims. We were all handpicked, and we all worked together testing different parts to make sure that when we went live, that everything went smoothly. I got the opportunity to have a first look at the system and navigate through all the different things that Billing was going to have to use in real life production. So it was really great. So for auto, we were testing the integrations. Uh, making sure that enterprise, that we could send through service requests through there. Uh, we could send through Autodex service requests so that shops could receive our estimates. Applying payments, it could be write-offs, refunds, so anything that we saw was going to be coming through billing, I had to potentially test any way it could break in any sort of different scenario. Very good at breaking things. So we, have, we definitely work with a, a eclectic set of broker partners. You have the ones that are tech savvy. I like to you know, give them a call or set a quick Teams meeting, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever they need. You got to make time for your important broker partners and that's what we do. I think the launch of R3 has given our brokers more control over issuing policies. The reception from the brokers that I've heard is they like having that control of issuing a policy and being there from start to finish and um, so far the response has been great. When coming to me, I have very limited knowledge to industry, industry side. Because of this project, uh, I have gained a lot of knowledge how the industry operates and how it is working. I love what I'm doing and that combination of uh, different uh, technology processes, uh, dealing with people on different departments and understanding more about the insurance company, I love that. From working on the project, I've learned that teamwork is very important. From being on the project, I've also missed my team since I was pulled from that role. It's nice to be reintegrated back and come with a new understanding of teamwork. I think one of the greatest things is to be able to say, you know, we did it. We said what we were gonna do early on, we had a plan and we executed on it. And all of that was because of focus, was because of dedication, was because of our people. I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Uh, grateful to be here and uh, looking forward to what's more to come. Okay, so exciting. Thank you. And I, again, I can't reinforce how fortunate we are um, with the talent that we have been able to attract to our organization, many who are in the crowd today. And people show up every day, you know, giving like 200%. They're so passionate and committed about where we're going, and I think we're so fortunate for that. So that's Next Horizon. Purpose-driven, digitally-led, national insurance company, unprecedented investment in talent. So how did we do this? You, know, you heard me say earlier that you know, we had had a long history of incremental thinking. Uh, we were not particularly experienced in large-scale transformation. Uh, so let me just share a few of our, our um, observations on our approach to transformation of this scale. And again, many of these concepts, we, we got these through working with proven partners in the industry. And the first one, is what we've been talking about throughout today, accelerated versus incremental mindset. And I think, just to put this into perspective, to give you a scale for what we're talking about, we put the equivalent of a decade worth of capital investment into two years, 
right? So that is a huge, huge commitment. And if you look at our um, expense ratio in our organization, we're running about seven points higher than we normally would in a normal business as usual environment. And so we ha we've made that decision that that investment is worth doing over a period of time, but it takes a significant amount of confidence and appetite to do that. The second one I referred to is proven partners. And proven partners is all about this concept of not trying to do it ourselves. Like, we traditionally would have hired some smart people and try to figure it all out. And what we did in this uh, exercise was, let's go out to the world and find the best partners we can find who have actually done this before. And let them bring leading thought to how we can transform this business at a pace like we've never done before. And specifically, we've worked very closely with McKinsey on the operating model design side, and we've worked with Deloitte and Guidewire on our technology program. And they have been fantastic partners and really elevated our thinking around transformation. The third uh, one I'm very passionate about, and our leadership team uh, has spent a lot of time on this. When we started this transformation, we were talking about it like it was a technology transformation. And that was a mistake we had made in the past where we replaced our technology systems but didn't change our operating model. And this time we completely flipped that around. You wanted to start, we wanted to start with business strategy and operating model design and then enhance that with the technology strategy. And to be honest, the benefits that I talked about earlier, many of them have been not tied directly to the technology. We've seen other benefits from our operating model that have been just incredible for us. And it's really helped focus where we need to go. The final one we call dynamic resource allocation. Again, none of these were our ideas. We borrowed these from very bright people that we're working with. And dynamic resource allocation is the concept of when you're replacing and rebuilding every part of your business, you could be easily become overwhelmed. And so we, we, we moved to this idea of strategic boulders. So there are three to six big boulders in our company that we are all aligned to. And then we take our resources and we align all those resources to those boulders. Rather than trying to spread everybody thinly across a hundred different activities. And honestly, this is a, a methodology, a proven one, that we will continue forever, uh, well after the transformation is gone. The impact of this has been incredible. So hopefully, uh, you can take away a few of those concepts back to your own businesses. I don't think they're unique to our organization or even a transformation. And we've seen incredible uh, and positive results from that. So as I get to the tail end of my comments, I want to just share a few more highlights of some of the benefits we're seeing from this radical and accelerated transformation journey we've been on. The first one is 100% connectivity to our, our independent broker network. Again, in our previous model, everything was manual, everything was traditional. We now have 100% connectivity to our broker partners so they can work seamlessly in their systems and integrate into our platforms. And that's allowing the second highlight, which is this concept of straight through processing. And after launching Personal Auto this summer, we set a target of having over 90% straight through processing through this, this model with our underwriting rules and pricing built into the technology. We're only a few short months in, and we're already hitting 80% straight through processing. So an incredible change in our business model. And then finally, the ability to provide you know, unprecedented customer service. We used to quite literally measure our business in days and weeks, and sometimes months. And now we are actually measuring ourselves in seconds in terms of some of the response times and minutes. And so that, this is all based off of the new core platform that we are uh, that we launched this summer. Financially, we had an incredible highlight this summer when we were going through our, our uh, transformation program and we were seeing record new business coming into the business, $10 million a month. So again, just pause and put that into perspective. And I remember some of my, my leadership team saying, whoa, like we're $475 million company. We're on track to write over $100 million in new business this year. And we started to change our mindset to, you know, how do we manage this growth through pricing and other initiatives? But the, but the amazing thing was, we didn't talk about whether we could actually write it. We could actually consume this business now with our new operating model. 
we had to talk about whether we could capitalize the growth or whether we wanted to write it. And so an incredible change in the ability to scale our business in, very sh in a very short period of time. So what are our brokers saying? Um, one of our missions was this should be seamless and not a lot of pain for our broker partners. They've been through transformations with others. Um, it's not something that can be fun always for our partners. There are bumps along the road. And we're really pleased that the feedback we've been getting, notwithstanding having some of those bumps, has been very positive. And this quote, uh, I just love. It gets at this concept of the speed of our new process from the broker's view. And the other com conversation we've had with our brokers is this is allowing them now to compete with new models like direct-to-consumer models and giving them a chance uh, to move much, much faster. So what's next for Gore Mutual? As we head into the third year of our transformation program, we are going to complete the entire replacement of our entire operating model and technology. In the next few weeks, we will launch property, at which point we'll have completed 80% of the transformation in less than two years. And that is an incredible accomplishment for a company that's 180 years old. This will let us now start to explore the exciting part of our journey, which we're calling the innovation layer and the customer experience layer. And that's why many of our team are here. I think we have one of the largest groups here of all the companies here. And we're excited to start to take this platform, this core platform that we have, and leverage it through customer and broker experience and start to create some of those moments of truth that we talked about earlier for our customers. And there are many different exciting ideas that we're doing here with customer journey mapping and understanding where we can really win in this area. And then finally, with a high-performing, scalable platform, the future is all about growing and scaling this organization to become a purpose-driven, digitally-led national insurance company over the next decade. And one of the psychological milestones for us we're really excited about is later this month, we'll be opening a new office in Canada's financial district on Bay Street. And this is truly a, uh, a milestone for our company because there's a few reasons we're doing it. One is to send a very strong message to the market that we're serious about our transformation and we're serious about our national expansion. While other companies have been reducing their footprints, uh, reducing their investing, we have actually accelerated our investment throughout the pandemic. The other one is to attract more industry-leading talent across the country. So with that, I will close out my comments and just say thank you so much for listening to our story this morning. Our story of taking a 180-year-old company, Canada's, one of Canada's oldest PNC mutual insurance companies, and transforming it into a high-performing industry leader in quite literally just a few short years. And hopefully you can take away some of the principles and the concepts that I shared with you today back to your businesses, because we've seen incredible change, and it's a very exciting time for our organization. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the week, and really appreciate everyone coming to hear our story today.